Alrighty, it's time to change things up a bit. I don't think I'm actually gonna do entire crash courses anymore because first off, I think it takes too long to make those crash courses and they're not necessarily useful because you could probably get uh, equally comprehensive crash course, probably more comprehensive if you just search it up online. What I think I'm more helpful in doing is providing you guys with tips on how to memorize certain things that are harder to memorize. So if you guys want any specific things that you guys want help with memorizing, just let me know. I don't think that the Crash Bros are just too long and too boring. Let us stick with the very interesting tips and tricks videos, okay? And I will keep coming out with some AP tips and tricks videos and I can literally do this at a much faster rate and I can focus on more of the things that I think are hard. So today we're going to talk about derivatives. Hello everybody, I'm Karar and today I'm going to be talking to you guys really quick about how to memorize your derivatives, your common derivatives. So like the main derivatives that are really hard to memorize are the trick derivatives, right? Those ones are super, super annoying to memorize. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the basic trig functions, right? You got sine x, cosine x, blah, blah, blah. So of course, if you take the derivative of sine, you get cosine. If you take the derivative of cosine, you get negative sine. Now, the easiest way to remember this is that essentially, whenever you do trig um, derivatives, you want to flip the function. So in, case, in this case, you're going from sine to cosine, cosine to sine. In terms of memorizing sine, the trick is really fun, okay? As long as it starts with a c, it's negative, and if it doesn't start with a c, it's positive. So, hence the negative sign here. Now, just a quick trick, like, this applies to a lot of things, but for derivatives, if you just want to quickly check that you got, you're got you on the right track, just try it at, like, zero, for example. Like, let us draw the graph of sine x. It looks like this, kind of, right? So, you know that the derivative is the tangent slope, so you could tell that it's kind of positive when it's at zero, right? So, if we plug in to our derivative function, we should get a positive number. So let's say we accidentally said that d of dx of sine x is equal to sine x. Then if we plugged into this, we would get that the derivative is zero, which is clearly not true. Otherwise, it would be a flat line. So we know that it makes a lot more sense if it's cosine x, because then it would be one. And it also makes sense that it's positive, not negative cosine x, because you can see that the graph is going upward. And then you can also apply the same logic to make sure you got your cosine derivative right as well. Okay, now for tan x, the then you gotta memorize it as d over dx is equal to secant squared x. And then I usually memorize this in pairs with secant x because secant x is secant x tan x. Now the way I like to remember this is that both of them have one secant x, right? But as I said before, with all these trig functions, you gotta flip the function. So in this case, tan is paired with secant. So you take your one secant and you pair it with the opposite of tan, which is another secant. So you get two secants and now it's secant squared. For secant, you also start with secant, right? However, the opposite of secant is tan, so you add in the tan after, so now you got a secant x and a tan x. Alright, very epic, that's how you remember that. Then remember to take the opposite function. Now, cotangent and cosecant x are really easy once you have tan and secant x down, okay? So if you take d over dx of cotangent x, you basically take the exact same thing as tangent x, except flip it to add a c. So in this case, it's cosecant squared x. But remember what I said? If it starts with a C, what does it do? It starts with a negative sign. That is right. So we put a negative sign. Very cool. And then for cosecant x, it's the same idea. You take this guy, you add C's in front of all of them, cosecant x, cotangent x, and then, post it starts with a C, you know what to do. Negative, let's go. All right, there are your trig derivatives. Very cool. Now let us do inverse trig derivatives. All right, we got sine inverse of x. We got cosine inverse of x. So the way that I like to remember the inverse functions is that basically you got to think about how you could apply the function. I know that didn't say anything, but like, let's say you're trying to convert sine x to cosine x, right? Let's say that sine theta is equal to y. Then cosine theta is equal to root 1 minus y squared. So clearly sine theta and cosine theta are related to a root 1 minus whatever. So the derivative is just going to be 1 over root minus 1 minus x squared. And then for cosine x, remember, it got a c in front of it, so it's negative. Okay, just to be clear, like this over here is not like a mathematically proven way of memorizing it. It's just how it sticks in my head because I know that sine theta and cosine theta are related in this way. So they should have that in their derivative. All right, and then for tan inverse x, the one very important relationship relating to tan is basically the tan squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x. So because this looks like that, basically the derivative is 1 over x squared plus 1. Wow, very cool. Dude, I know this is the stupidest way to remember it, but like, if you know that this is a thing, right? Whenever you deal with tan, you always do squared plus 1. So it makes sense that its derivative is 1 over x squared plus 1. And then for cotangent, it is literally the negative. 
All right, and then lastly, we got secant and cosecant. So now we can apply the same logic for as we did for sine x and cosine x, and we know that like if we do secant squared x minus 1, we get tan squared x. So we know that we're going to have an x squared minus 1 somewhere. So in this case, our x squared minus 1 is going to look like this, root x squared minus 1. And then for no reason at all, you put an absolute value of x over here. And then the same thing for the other one, except it's negative. Now, a good way to spot check that you got the right derivative is like, the reason why this can't be flipped is because if you plug in something between 0 and 1, this right here would be positive. So if you accidentally flipped it, it would be negative, and that doesn't make any sense because you can't have a negative in the square root. Similarly, for secant and cosecant, like, in this case, we know that x is greater than 1, which is why this is positive. But if you accidentally put 1 minus x squared, it would not make sense because you know that secant and cosecant x are greater than 1. So if you try plugging it in, you get a negative number in the square root, and no, good. Alright, that's basically all you gotta know for inverse trig functions. It's very cool. Hope you guys enjoyed. That's how I remember it. Not mathematically sound at all, but it helps. It helps a lot. Okay, thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time!